Hi everyone, Monique here with Little Gems Creations 1. Today we are going to be making a minion extra small dog sweater and we're going to be working it from the bottom up, so the waist up. And we're going to start that in just a moment. Everyone, Monique here with Little Gems Creations 1. Today we are going to, first of all, be trying a new camera angle. Second of all, we are making an extra small Minions dog sweater and we're going to be working it from the bottom up. So you're going to need a 5mm crochet hook. You're going to need a pair of scissors. You're going to need a darning needle. You're going to need yellow, blue, black, and gray. Okay, so let's start with our blue. Now, if you've watched any of my other extra small dog tutorials, I basically make all my dog sweaters the same. So we're going to start with a chain of 40. So to make my chain, I take my yarn, I cross it over. Using the back working yarn, I do a loop and that's my first chain. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Without twisting my chain, I'm going to go back into that first stitch. I'm going to do a slip stitch and then I'm going to chain up two. One, two. Now we're going to do a half double crochet in each stitch around and we should end up with 40 half double crochets. To do a half double crochet, you go yarn over into the stitch, pull your yarn through, yarn over, through all three stitches. And you're gonna do that for 40 stitches. And then when we get to the other end, I'll show you how we attach our rows. So you do that and come back. Okay, so I've got my 40 stitches. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into that chain two, the second chain and I'm gonna do a slip stitch, okay? And I'm gonna chain up two, and I'm gonna go around and do half double crochet again. But when you get to the next um, place where you would join in the second, I don't want you to. I want you to join in the very first stitch so I'm going to do the 40 stitches, come back, and I'll show you what I mean by that, okay? So do 40 half double crochets around for your second row, and then meet me back. Okay, so I've done my 40 stitches for my second row. So what we would do here normally is we would go into the second chain. But here's my thing. When I do that, for some reason, my stitches start to go sideways like this and I don't like that so the way I've discovered for that works for me to get it to not do that is instead of going into the second chain of my chain two I'm going to go into that very first stitch instead okay and then I'm going to chain up two so that means your first row you go into the chain the second row you go into the stitch. Our next row will go into the chain and that will prevent our stitches from kind of going sideways, okay? 
So I want you to do eight rows of blue. When it comes to your final row, do not do your slip stitch to attach rows because we're gonna change colors and we'll do our slip stitch with our changing of the colors. So eight rows and then come back and meet me. Great. Okay, so I've got 40 stitches and I've done eight rows. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now we're gonna switch to our yellow. Okay, oops, sorry, didn't mean to hit the tripod. Okay, so we did not attach. So this is the chain stitch, chain stitch, chain stitch, chain stitch. So we're going into the stitch. So I'm gonna go into that, whoops, into that stitch and I'm gonna grab my yellow use it to make my slip stitch and then chain two okay at i'm gonna make that loop big at this time i'm gonna cut my blue get it out of my way i'm gonna tie the blue and yellow not too too tight but just tight enough okay get rid of those so we are going to do four rows of yellow. Just like we did the blue, half double crochets around. Um, and follow your pattern of connecting. So we just went into the stitch, so this next one will be going into the chain and so on and so forth. Come back to me when you have joined your fourth row, okay, of half double crochet. And notice how our line is nice and straight. I love it. Okay, so do that, come back. And hit the like and subscribe if you haven't done it yet. Okay. Okay, hi everyone, I'm back. So I've done my four rows of yellow and I've done my slip stitch. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain two and we're gonna do only 20 half double crochets, okay? So I'm at two, three, four, five, six, oops, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so now I want you to chain two and we're going to work just on those 20 stitches and we're going to do four rows. So we already did one. So we're going to do four rows, half double crochet, just on those 20 stitches. So we're going to have to turn our work, okay? So... Um, and then we're going to switch to black and then we'll be done the back side of the sweater. Now these sweaters are to fit probably a three to five pound dog. These are not meant for much larger than that. If you want to go up a size, I would suggest using like if you just need to go up a little bit, then I would go up to a 5.5 millimeter hook, possibly a six, but your six would make your stitches a lot looser. If you wanted to go down in size, you could go down to a 
4.5, but that wouldn't give you a lot of elasticity because crochet is already pretty stiff. So if you wanted to go much lower than that, I would suggest going to a lighter weight yarn. The yarn I'm using is four ply worsted weight. And if you wanted to go say down to an extra, extra small, I would go to a three ply baby yarn or um, sock yarn, something like that, and use maybe a size four hook uh, or a four. If you're using a three ply uh, baby yarn, you could use a 4.5. That would be quite a loose stitch, um, but you could use also a four. And if you wanted to go even smaller, like an extra, extra, extra small dog sweater, you could go to like a two ply baby yarn or sock yarn, or I think it's called fingering yarn and uh, use like a, anywhere from a two to a 3.5 size hook. And I'm talking millimeters, sorry, I'm from Canada. We don't do J hooks and things like that. So that's three rows I've talked through. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you wanted to change size like that, the other thing is I do do some videos. I haven't done many yet, but it is to come in the future. I'm gonna start doing basically all of my sweaters, but in the small size. I don't make much bigger sweaters than that. So a small size would fit like a bulldog or um, uh, a Shih Tzu, like a, a heavier Shih Tzu. I have a Yorkie Shih Tzu and she's only five pounds and these sweaters fit her. Uh, they're getting a bit on the tight side. <laughs> but she doesn't want to discuss it. <laughs> okay, so I've done my four rows here. Um, so now we are going to, okay, I'm on my very last stitch, okay? I've done my three loops. Now I'm gonna get my ginormous ball of black. And for the last yarn over, I'm gonna use my black to pull through and then I'm gonna chain up two, okay? So this just makes it look like our next row started right at that very end. So I'm gonna get a, we're just doing half double crochets on those same uh, 20 stitches and we're gonna do two rows of black, okay? This is to give the minions glasses their stems or whatever you want to call them. And I'm just putting a little knot there. And we're gonna do our two rows of black on the 20 stitches, half double crochets. Okay. So what was I saying? Okay, about the sizes. So if you want to do that, you can do that and you would still use the same amount of stitches and everything. You'd have to play around. It depends if your dog is a lot bigger or a lot smaller. Um, at a certain point, you can't go too much bigger. You could, you could do this in a bulky yarn, but I have tried that and I found that the bulky yarn was just so, it had no give in it at all. So when the customer went to put it on their dog, it actually had no give to stretch around, you know, legs and paws and stuff. So I would not suggest a bulky yarn. I would suggest more stitches if this is way too small, even if you're using, cause I'm using a five. So you could probably go 5.5, .5, depending on how loosely you crochet. Um, and it would still look good. It wouldn't look haggard. If you go too big though, it starts to look haggard and you don't want that. You want your little baby to look just cute as can be. And if you're selling them for craft sales, it's the same thing. People don't want to buy something that looks too loose and kind of 
less gloppy. Um, so, yeah, so I'm gonna be doing my dog sweaters in the small size. I don't go much bigger than that is what I started to say because then I'm charging like, I'm charging the same price as I would for a people sweater and a lot of people are interested in spending that much on a dog sweater. So having said that, I had one person make one of, get me to make one of those skull sweaters for their German Shepherd. I couldn't believe it. Okay, so I've done my two rows in black. I'm going to snip my, my yarn. Now, very gently, just pull that tail through the loop. I don't want you to pull it tight because we're going to have to pick out that knot later. And if you've watched any of my other tutorials, you'll know why. But don't spoil it for everyone. Spoiler alert. <laughs> we'll save that for later. Now, I'm going back to the beginning. I'm taking my yellow and now we're going to form the leg holes for the dog. So I pulled my yarn through. I'm going to chain two. Okay. I'm going to catch the tail of my yarn right here. I'm going to catch it in that first stitch just to anchor it down extra. Okay. And I do still um, sew it in later too. But I just like it extra secure. I'm paranoid about things falling like coming undone or a thread showing and I don't like that kind of thing so um so we're gonna do 20 stitches we're gonna pick up 20 stitches but it's just like normal crocheting once you've attached your we're gonna do now this part is the long part this part is where we're going to decrease at each end and I decrease a certain way because it puts a nice little solid stitch right where the dog's leg would rub. It's not going to bother the dog, but it's going to protect the yarn so that it doesn't uh, like fray and come undone. Okay, I was talking. I didn't count. So two. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, nineteen. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19, I need one more. And 20. Okay, so chain up two. Now, we're going to start our decrease. So, yarn over. In the first stitch, grab your yarn. We got three loops. Yarn over, next stitch, grab your yarn. Five loops, one, two, three, four, five. Yarn over, go through all five loops. That counts as one stitch. This is gonna be a row of 18 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, 17. Okay, so we've got 17 stitches. So these last two stitches have to be made into one to make 18. So yarn over into the stitch, grab yarn, pull through, yarn over into the stitch, grab your yarn, pull through, five loops. One, two, three, four, five. Pull through all five loops, chain up two. Now we're going to decrease on each end until we get down to 10. So I'm going to do it one more time. Yarn over into the stitch, grab your yarn, pull through. Yarn over into the next stitch, grab your yarn, pull through. Five loops. One, two, three, four, five. Yarn over, go through all five loops. That counts as one stitched. Okay, and then we're going to go two, three, 
four, this will be our 16 row, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so now we know we have to make the next two stitches into one. So yarn over into the one stitch, pull through, yarn over into the next stitch, pull through, five loops, one, two, three, four, five, and that made 16. Now I want you to keep repeating this, decreasing at each end until you're down to 10 stitches, and then you come back to me. Okay, so I did down to 10. So I've done my last stitch, I've got my loop on my hook. I am going to go over to the black chain two, I'm going to slip stitch into the black chain two and I'm going to chain up two. Okay. Now going to the other side where I said not to pull it tight, we're going to pull out that knot. We're going to take our loop. We are also going to go into this chain two yellow over here. Using the tail of our black, we're going to do a slip stitch. Now we are going to pull through that loop and pull tight. Pull tight this time. We're going back to our yellow. Okay. Now we're going to do 30 stitches around. Remember going into our chain stitch, chain when we connect. And we're going to do three rows of half double crochet. So one, all in yellow. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, which is perfect for the yellow that we just did. Now the black is harder to see. We're gonna go one, or ten, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. That's the 20 from the back, right? So then we're gonna slip into the chain. Next one will be slip into the stitch. Okay, slip into the chain, chain up two. So that counted as one row. We got to do three in total. Okay, so come back when you've done that. Okay, so I'm back. I did my three rows of yellow. Now I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna pull my yarn through, make a knot, and this is what we've got. So now we need that darning needle. This is my knitting and crocheting go bag. I'll put a link in the description so you can see what's all in it. I have a video showing you. Turn your work inside out. We're gonna quickly just hide these threads, which I have to say I hate doing. When I hide threads, I do a stitch. Then I go back a little ways and then I go past where I stitched 
Then I go back and then I go past where I stitched and this is called back stitching. There we go. And then I snip and then I go the next one. And I, like I said, I do anchor my yarn and you saw I do some tying as well. Um, and then the back stitching also anchors. It's something I, I learned when I used to do a lot of cross stitch is you weren't supposed to put knots in behind the back here cross stitch because then you'd have these bumps. They just said back stitch and so that's what I do and I do it in crochet and I find it works really well. So we just do this. If you haven't had a chance, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. It helps me grow my YouTube channel and since I'm a crafter, unfortunately, it's harder for crafters to grow their channels because we do cater to really a, a smaller and smaller group of people. So it would be wonderful if you like and subscribe and support me. So here we go. I just do this with all my threads. And I always go into the color that I did with it. So I wouldn't put my yellow in my black. I would put black in the black and the yellow in the yellow. You know what I mean? Because you wouldn't want it to show through. Oh, ha ha, I had two hiding. Here I thought I didn't have quite so many threads to hide. Yeah, and another thing that YouTube watches for is people commenting. If they comment on your video, then you get um, more likely to be put in the search. So if you want to leave a comment, um, what you think of the tutorial, if you think I could improve my camera angle, if there's another... Um, uh, dog sweater that you want to see made or something that you thought would be cute in a dog sweater. Um, this video is actually inspired by a person who wanted to see it made. They left a comment and so I got on it. Maybe not quite as quickly as the person would have liked but I do have to do a full-time job as well so. Sorry I think I'm going out of frame there. So I do work full time and this is kind of my hobby. I love crocheting. I find it very relaxing. There we go. And the only reason we have so many threads with this dog sweater is because of the color changes. Um, the more color changes, the more threads, unfortunately. But it's worth it because it's a cute sweater once it's done. And the person who asked for this, I think, saw it in one of my collection videos where I show you some of the different things I've made. Okay, so while we were gabbing, I got all the threads hidden. We're going to turn it back inside in. So this is what we have for the base of our dog sweater. This is the back. This is the tummy. So that would be the way the legs come out. So now we're going to make the minion's eyeball. So we're going to start with black. Okay. So, ooh, let's use the right side of the hook. Using the same size hook, I'm taking my black. I am doing two stitches. Now I'm gonna, don't know if you can see because black is so hard, but I'm gonna go into that first stitch, stitch, but I'm also catching my tail. See, my tail is here. And we're gonna do six single crochets. Two, 
right into that center. Three, four, five, six. Then we're gonna slip stitch. Then we're gonna chain one and we're gonna put two single crochets in each stitch. So we'll end up with 12. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. Then we're going to want white. I had the white. There's the white. I have a ginormous ball of white. Ginormous. So we're going to do our slip stitch and we're going to attach our white. We're going to chain up two. We're going to do half double crochets with right white. And we're going to go two in the first stitch and then one in the next to give us three. And then we're gonna go two, whoops. One, two, and then three. One, two in one stitch, and then three. One, two in one stitch, and then three. One, two in one stitch, and then three. And then one, two in one stitch, and then three. Then we're gonna get our gray. I know, lots of color changes on this. And with our gray, we're gonna slip stitch. Okay, and we're gonna chain three. So, um, at this time you can cut those other Leave a nice tail though. Okay, and then we're gonna do double crochets. And we're gonna go one, two in one stitch. And then we're gonna go a single and a single. And then we're gonna go one, two in one stitch. and then a single, and a single, and then one, two, and then a single, and a single. And then we're gonna go one, two in one stitch and then a single and a single. This eye looks pretty big. Hard oh, work. And then one, two in one stitch and then a single and a single. These are double crochets. So we started with singles halves and now doubles and then two in one and then a single and then a single and then we attach to the third chain on the hook okay we're leaving a long tail because we're going to use it to sew 
Okay, so take your long tail, put it through the loop, pull tight. Now we're going to go back here. We're going to knot the black to the white. Can you see what I'm doing back here? Black to the white. Then we're going to knot the other white to the gray. Okay. Then the center black, we're going to pull tight. Okay. And so this is what our eyeball looks like. We're going to grab our darning needle. We're going to hide all but our long tail. And just like I said before, go through a few stitches and then go back and through a few more and back and through a few more and snip. And then we're just going to do this to all of these. Okay. And you got to go with the color. So if you're doing black, sew in black. If you're doing white, sew on the white. And the white's not got much to sew onto, so. Choose carefully, young Padawan. Yeah, I know, my geek just came out there, but. One day we'll do a big project and we'll do like a Minecraft blanket or something. But. I have other blankets I gotta finish first. And stuff like that. Okay. So we're just hiding those threads. Again, I hate hiding threads. Whoever invented hiding threads. Well, I mean, you gotta do it, right? But I hate it. I hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. Okay. Now the gray. Okay. Now we have our long gray. Okay, so here's what we want to do. This is our minion eyeball. So first of all, we want to make sure our sweater is folded so that the armholes are even, right? Okay. Then we want to do our eyeball. But we are not sewing the eyeball on at the edges like most people would think because I noticed with my the minion things that I've looked at that the it kind of the gray kind of curls around, right? So, I'm going to center this the best I can and pin it. And then we are going, going to take our gray and come up in between. I'm just going on the eyeball here. We're going to come up in between the gray and the white. And we are going to stitch all around where the gray and white meet. Okay? So, I don't know if you can see it very well, but see, I'm going through here and I'm coming out over here. So in there, and this is called back stitching. So I'm pulling that tight and I've got my fingers in here so I'm making sure I don't, so I go back and then I go past where I started, okay? And what I'm doing is I'm actually going around the stitches towards the white end. Do you know what I'm saying here? So 
The gray can curl. See how it curls like that? Okay. So, and that gives the illusion of dimension. <laughs> that made me sound like I knew what I was doing, but I just, I flipped it out one day. I was like, hey, and if I did this, this would happen. That's very much how I kind of get along through life. And if I did this, that'll happen. <laughs> so, like I said, I'm going back and then past. Back and then past. And I'm going right between the stitches, like the posts of the stitches. Okay, we're going to do this all the way around and then see it'll curl it'll look so cool and if you don't quite like the place like if I I've put the eyeball too high for you if you prefer it lower put it lower instead of doing your black stripe because that's supposed to look like the band to hold the eyeball or whatever this is supposed to be I don't know, they have a band though. Okay, so this is getting difficult now because, yeah. There we go. And then around there and then through here. And you know what? Crafts aren't perfect. Can't do any craft perfect. So if it's slightly off kilter, well, it's slightly off kilter. That's the way it works. If you're, a, I'm a pretty big perfectionist, but I have come to the conclusion that with crafts, especially applique crafts, you can't always get it perfect. Although, you know, we're getting pretty darn close to perfect. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, here we go. There. So, we've gone all the way around. I'm going to finish up on the inside. I'm going to take out that needle so I don't chop myself. Okay, we're going to end in the back and then I'm going to simply grab some of that gray that we can see and here I'm going to do a knot. So I make a loop, okay, I go through the loop once, through the loop twice, and I pull tight. I'm going to do that again, make a loop, whoops, or not, let's try it again. Make, oh my goodness, my fingers don't want to work anymore. Make a loop, go through it once, go through it twice, pull tight. And then I'm just going to go through stitches. And then I'm going to cut it. Okay, so all we have left, see, so now, look, see, kind of curls in and you're golden. Look at that. Okay, so all we have left are the smile and the overalls. So let's put on a smile. So. Take a length of scrap black. Take your darning needle. Okay, so we're gonna start. Uh, up here. Okay, and I'm holding the tail of my yarn back there. Okay. Then we're gonna go here. We're going to come up through here and we're going to go mm, just 
go here and we'll go up here and then we'll go here is that about right nope too high we'll go about here okay so then we're gonna go here we're now gonna come back out there and you see how I left spaces that's because now I'm gonna go fill the spaces Come out through the stitches. Go here. And then for our final stitch, we're going to finish off our smile. There we go. And then on the inside, because we skipped those stitches, we started off back where we, and we're just going to tie a knot. Don't pull too, too tight. You don't want it to crinkle. There's our crazy little smile. Um, this, I'm just gonna tie another knot. And I'm just gonna snip a longer snip. So we'll have little ends there, but that's okay. It won't show through. Oh, and I just threw my needle on the floor. Not good, the cat might like that. Okay, so there's our little smile. Okay. Okay, so now coveralls. The little, we need the blue. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We are going to, okay, so we've folded this centered, right? So those are the ends. One, two, three. I think we'll go in three. And we're gonna catch our yarn, okay? We're in the blue. Then we're gonna, how do I do this? Gonna crochet our way. Um, okay, so how am I doing this? Okay, so I'm going in through a space, pulling my yarn through, okay? Now I'm going in through another space and doing a slip stitch. In through another space, Pulling a slip stitch in through another space, pulling a slip stitch into another space, pulling a slip stitch, and then we want to go like this, like this, and we're just doing these weird slip stitches all the way around. I don't know that this is called anything. This is just kind of something I do. So you always want to go in where your yarn left off. And it's not going to be perfect. It's really a winging it kind of thing. This is why a lot of my projects, you want to end up in the blue, okay? Okay. And then check and see if you like it. I like it. Cut, pull tight. Okay. So now what we do on one side, we got to do the other. So we went in three, one, two, three. So about here. And okay, so then we kind of, it's not going to be perfect. But when are overalls ever perfect? Sorry, I'm getting out of frame. This is difficult for me because it's got really no rhyme or reason. 
Notice I'm putting my fingers where the holes are because I want to go just under the holes. Sorry, this is taking concentration on my part. Okay, see I've done something because I've got like a pucker, I think. Is that a pucker or not really? Maybe it's just me. Feels like a pucker. I think it's just me. Okay. <laughs> and then we're going to go keep going until you're right into the blue. Uh-oh. Uh oh, don't do what I did. <laughs> I almost crocheted them together. Okay. Okay. And then cut your yarn, pull tight. Make sure you're happy with how it looks. Hello, darning needle. We're gonna take our tails We're gonna pull them into the back. And then we're just gonna stitch. This one I'm gonna do a knot because we don't want this coming undone and it's kinda helter-skelter. So just like I showed you, make a loop, pull through twice. And then I'm just gonna weave in the rest of the tail. So that, that makes the knot um, lay flat and you never ever ever cut where you not Okay, so that's that front one <laughs> That's probably the hardest thing to do is the And if you can find a better way you go ahead and do it the better way because you can do an embroidery stitch. It's just half the time I forget how to do the embroidery stitch. So again, go through the loop once, twice, pull tight. Never cut where you're not, so go through a few stitches. Cut. Now we gotta tidy up that back. Same thing, bring your tail to the back. Go through some, make a loop. Pull tight. So I think it, it's supposed to be the minions wearing glasses. That's why it's kind of three dimensional. So that's why I don't make the legs go all the way around the head. I don't know if they actually do. The picture I looked at didn't look like it went all the way around the head, so. Okie dokie. So, this is it. You have your minion sweater. So don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want notifications of when I do new videos, you hit the little bell. Thanks for watching. There's the back. So this is where the leg, legs would come out. Have a great day. Bye now.